Hi, my young readers, and welcome back to the channel. If you're new, welcome. We've got a great story for you, and it's just at the right time because at the time of this recording, summer is about to start, which means school is about to come to an end for the summer. And I know many of you all can't wait for summer to officially roll on in. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. Stay tuned. The name of this story is called The Bernstein Bears Go to Camp by Stan and Jan Bernstein. This is also a request by Chase and his mom, Alicia Miller. Thank you so much for the request. Enjoy. It was the last day of school and the beginning of vacation, that wonderful time when little bears can sit around doing absolutely nothing. Brother Bear and Sister Bear shouted goodbye to Teacher Jane and hopped onto the bus for the happy trip home. Well, asked Mama Bear after a day or so of vacation, are you enjoying sitting around doing nothing? It's great, said Sister. Absolutely, said Brother. There's just one trouble with it, added Sister. There's nothing to do. Here, take a look at this, said Mama, as she reached for something that had come in the mail. This is what it looked like. Some of the things looked interesting, but Brother wondered what fully supervised meant, and Sister wasn't so sure about the overnight sleep out. It sounded a little scary. Where's this camp? asked Sister. Not far, answered Mama. How will we get there? Brother wanted to know. A bus comes for you in the morning and brings you home in the afternoon. Sounds like a school, said Brother. We'll think about it, said the cubs, and went back to doing nothing. Well, not exactly. They picked a few wildflowers, chased a few butterflies, turned over a few rocks, and thought about it. Mama, could we try Grizzly Bob's day camp just to see if we like it? They asked. Of course, said Mama. A couple of mornings later, brother and sister were in camp shorts and t-shirts, all ready and waiting when the bus came. It didn't look much like the school bus. And Grizzly Bob didn't look much like Teacher Jane, and the camp didn't look anything like school. Grizzly Bob had built his camp beside a lake at the edge of the forest. There were log buildings, a flagpole flying the camp flag, a big bulletin board with the camp rules. There certainly were a lot of rules, some interesting paths, a roped-in place to swim, there was even a big red canoe. Bob had made name tags for the cubs. You're campmates now, so you better get to know each other, he said. Then he took them on a tour of the camp. There was an office with a desk where he did his paperwork and a first aid corner full of bandages and things for cuts and bruises. There was a rec hall to go into when it rained. Rec was short for recreation. There was a picnic place and a barbecue pit where they roasted hot dogs for lunch. Sister burned hers a little, but she traded with another cub who liked burned hot dogs. Bob announced that after lunch, they would all climb up Spook Hill to the very top of Skull Rock, the special place where they would have their end-of-camp powwow and sleep out. It was quite a climb. That evening, Mama and Papa Bear were eager to know how the cubs liked camp. It was okay, said Brother, but they sure have a lot of rules. It was all right, 
agreed Sister. They sure have plenty of bandages and stingy stuff for cuts. But what they were both thinking about was Skull Rock and the end of Camp Sleepout, especially Sister. The second day was different. Brother had a great day. He passed the swimming test and was allowed to ride in the canoe. Sister didn't have such a good day. She played dodgeball and some of the cubs threw pretty hard. The third day, Sister had fun. She got a star for her birch picture frame that she made in arts and craft. But Brother hurt his knee in the wheelbarrow race. The fourth day, both of them had fun. And every day after that, so much fun that they forgot about Skull Rock and the sleep out. Almost. Papa found the sleeping bags that he and Mama had used on their honeymoon. And when the camp bus came on the morning of the big night, brother and sister were ready. Sort of. The climb up Spook Hill wasn't so hard this time, even with backpacks. The cubs were strong and tough from their summer of camping. Tomorrow would be field day, the last day of camp, when their parents would come to watch their games and contests and see awards given out. But for now, all the cubs could think about was the big sleep out. It was just beginning to get dark when they reached Skull Rock. Grizzly Bob built a campfire. Then he went into a small cave. When he came out, he was dressed in a beautiful Indian costume. Then the cubs sat in a semicircle and the powwow began. Bob told them old Indian legends of the great animal spirits the story of the great grizzly as big as the mountain, the soaring eagle who filled the sky, and the mighty salmon whose colors made the rainbow. As Bob told the old stories, the cubs could almost see the wonderful creatures in the fire-lit smoke as it curled up into the night sky. After the powwow, they had cocoa and honey bread, then they curled up in their sleeping bags and soon they were all fast asleep, even sister. The next day, brother and sister did very well in the field day games and contests. Brother won a trophy for finishing second in the dash and sister got medals for the dead bear's float and for her bead belt. It was almost the end of summer. School would be starting in a couple of weeks. Well, asked Papa, how did you like camp? It was great, said brother, hugging his trophy. It was great, agreed sister, wearing her medals proudly. But you know something? After Grizzly Bob's day camp, school will be like a vacation. Well, that ends our story. And I hope you guys got some great ideas because as of the time of this recording, summer is not quite here yet, but it is on its way. And I'm hoping you guys have got some great ideas for your upcoming summer vacation. Oh, I remember when I did summer camp. The things we did were just amazing to me when I was a kid. Oh, me too. I was in the Girl Scouts, uh, 4-H Club. There were so many different activities to do that I was not bored in the least. My parents wouldn't give me the time to be bored. But it looked like the Cubs' mom had checked out, you know, the day camp for the kids. And once she brought it up, they had to think about it. But once they realized they really didn't have anything else to do and checking out the day camp was in their best interest, they checked it out. And don't forget, they ended up loving it. They were able, they got fit. Mm -hmm. They ended mm -hmm. up loving the activities. Mm -hmm. They were a little nervous about the 
in activity, but mm-hmm. once they got into it, experienced it, mm-hmm. I think that it really did something for them because when made mention about going to school, they right. thought of it like, you know, that seemed more like a vacation. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> well, little darling, I hate to have to do this, but I've got to go. And I will see all of you guys on the next video. Bye! Well, I'm hoping you got a lot out of this. I'm hoping you got a lot out to plan for a fantastic summer vacation. So until next time, my young readers, I am your little darling narrator, out.